Restoring a Bing Clockwork Train. This is part 13, completing the job. In the last episode I made the buffers, and in this episode I'm painting the buffer stocks ready to fit them to the carriage. The original buffer stocks are made from aluminium, but I made the two copies from a piece of brass. And here's a picture of the paint drying. The paint of course is etch primer to start with. Each of the buffers is fitted by passing a bolt through the buffer beam, which in turn goes through the buffer stock, and then the buffer head screws onto the bolt, holding everything together. I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite to grip the buffer head so I can tighten it against the bolt. And here, at one end of the carriage, are the first pair of buffers fitted to the buffer beam. I mentioned in the previous episode that both ends of this carriage are different, and that is because one end's been repaired and whoever repaired it neglected to drill any holes for the buffers, possibly because the original buffers were lost. This is a quick fix. By taking a measurement from the other end, which is 2.5 cm in from the edge, I just mark the position, and then all I have to do is drill two one eighth of an inch diameter holes through the buffer beam using my Proxon motor tool, followed by fitting the buffer stocks and the buffer heads in exactly the same way as I did at the other end. And then once again I'm using a piece of scotch Brite to grip the buffer head to tighten it in place. Something known as Sod's Law, or generally the Chaos Theory, means I'm going to have a problem with the very last part. And sure enough, where the buffer beam's been repaired, there's a big lump of solder, and the washer won't fit. Simple answer, grind a flat on the washer, then it does fit. This scotch Brite tip is well worth remembering. It's a great way of tightening parts by hand without marking them. And now it's painting time. I'm using Phoenix Precision Paints Buffer Beam Red. And the first thing to do after you've taken off the lid is to thoroughly stir the contents of the can. I used a piece of mahogany plank for this. I've got lots of these short offcuts in a box and they make very good paint stirrers. When I first painted the running boards, I painted the ends and that was to just get a layer of paint on to start with. I find Phoenix Precision Paints to be possibly the best paint I ever use. Not only does it seem to cover in one coat, before it dries it just smooths out and all the brush marks disappear as if by magic. It's quite a therapeutic painting sometimes, and painting this is particularly therapeutic, being very careful to go around the junction between the buffer stock and the buffer head. It doesn't matter if I get some paint on the steel part because that would just scrape off once the paint's dried. Now comes the fun part. I need to match the colour of the main body of the carriage because a lot of the paint is missing. I start off with buffer beam red and I add some black and I get this colour which is really horrible. I think it's time to try a test in the corner and have a look at it. Well, it's not a million miles away but it's not quite there yet. It looks like a blob of diarrhoea on the corner of the carriage. It needs to have some crimson in it. How do I know this? Well, I've no idea. I just look at the colours and somehow I finally get the right colour. And unlike machining operations, it's nothing to do with the calibrated eye. It's just a case of mixing a colour that sits OK with the existing paint. And what makes this difficult is the paint I'm applying is wet and it's also glossy whereas the paint on the carriage has had about a hundred years to go quite matte. But don't forget the idea is not to repaint this carriage, it's just to make it look a little bit more presentable. Where most of the paint is missing, for instance on the top edge, I am actually repainting that, but the rest of the carriage is just getting a bit of a touch-up job. The colour's OK, it just looks a bit wrong because it's shiny. But once the repaired paintwork has dried, I'm going to wipe over it with some flatting agent. This is like matte varnish. And it's very strange stuff. It's acrylic as far as I'm aware. And when you apply it, you think, well, this is looking horrible. But then after about half an hour, a wonderful flatness occurs and everything blends together. When I first bought this clockwork train, it had two carriages with it. This one I'm working on is the same gauge as the locomotive, which is gauge three or two and a half inch gauge but the third carriage is O-gauge, so I don't think I'm going to bother with that. Because obviously, being O-gauge and therefore smaller, it's very much out of scale with this carriage and the locomotive. With all the paintwork touched in, these are the three tins of paint that made the colour that I used. So what's this? 
this is a really useful gadget. It's a bench accessory for my Proxon motor tool that allows me to hold it in position on the bench. And what's more, it's really well designed. You can swivel it like this. It's a ball joint that you can clamp. Like everything in the Proxon range, it's very well made too. So I think I'll leave it in a vertical position, and here I'm just clamping it in place. And why am I doing this? Well, I now have a very small bench grinder. Far less dangerous than using a large bench grinder. My daughter Charlotte has a small business called the Woodland Gift Company, and she makes jewellery. And here I'm slightly decreasing the size of one of these rings, which will fit into the handle in the carriage. I'm not really into the art of making jewellery, but I assume you do it something like this. And once you turn the ring round, it sits really nicely in the handle. And yes, yes, I do know that it's very bright and out of character, but I'll be painting this, but with some paint matched to the colour of the handle, it should blend in OK. So that's just about it. Here's a shot of the engine and the carriage on the shelf over the radiator. And I think it's quite an improvement on the way it was originally when I first got it. The interesting thing about this Bing railway engine, which of course is clockwork, is that I can't find a picture of it anywhere on the internet, and I mean anywhere, and I really have looked. I found one that looked quite similar, but it was a good bit shorter, and it's not the same engine as this one, but I worked from a photograph of that one to get the chimney dimensions, because really, the dome and the safety valve look the same as this one, so I assume that the chimney was also going to be the same part. But no, this engine is different. It's definitely an 040, there's no signs of any fittings for any leading wheels. And the whole locomotive is a good bit longer than the one in the photograph I have of it that I got off the internet. And also, don't forget, this is a gauge 3 or 2.5 inch gauge engine, not an O gauge engine. So if any experts out there know exactly what this is, Please let me know, I'm curious to find out. Here's the locomotive as I first got it, devoid of chimney and looking very forlorn. And after my sympathetic restoration, this is what it now looks like. I've quite enjoyed this restoration, it's been something a little bit different. But this is the end of the series, and I thank you for watching, and I hope you found it useful.